On to the next item of business, which is a debate on motion 23296 in the name of Monica Lennon on routine COVID-19 testing for all health and social care workers. Can I invite all members who wish to speak in this debate to press the request to speak buttons now, and I call on Monica Lennon to speak to and move the motion. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The motion in my name notes the ongoing threat to life and health posed by COVID-19. Today, the First Minister informed the country that a further 64 people who had tested positive have died from coronavirus. On behalf of Scottish Labour, I send condolences to everyone who has lost a loved one in recent days and throughout the pandemic. Staff working right across health and social care are on the front line and we are all grateful for the care and support they continue to provide to our constituents and our own friends and family. My motion calls on the Scottish Government to introduce routine weekly COVID-19 testing for all health and social care workers immediately. Eight months into the pandemic, it is unacceptable that this widespread testing is still not underway. Healthcare workers are often characterised as heroes, but they don't have superpowers. They are human and at risk too. That risk is to themselves, their families, and of course, the people they care for. We don't claim testing is a panacea. Scottish Labour has consistently called for a package of measures, including improvements to PPE. NHS and social care staff have been asking for widespread testing since the beginning of the pandemic. MSPs have echoed their calls, including Scottish Labour leader Richard Leonard, and I pay tribute to other colleagues, including Alison Johnston, for her persistent and consistent calls for mass testing. Back in May, I asked the Cabinet Secretary how many people had died after contracting COVID-19 in a hospital. We know that during March and April, COVID-19 outbreaks led to ward closures and sadly, the deaths of patients. We are now in the second wave of the virus and hospital onset COVID remains a serious issue. According to figures published by Public Health Scotland today, there have been over 1,200 definite and around 360 probable hospital onset cases in total. So identifying and containing the virus in hospitals is crucial for protecting patients and preventing hospital onset COVID. And last week we heard from a man whose father died after contracting COVID in the Glasgow Royal Infirmary. He believes his father had been exposed to COVID patients. Professor Jackie Taylor in a BBC interview stressed the need to control infections within hospitals. She said, she said testing all patients at the front door uh, is important because many don't have typical symptoms. And she also talked about the need for a coherent strategy for testing staff. The amendment from Donald Cameron today on contact tracing is also a, a key measure. We support this amendment and we are very concerned about tracing performance times. My colleague Jackie Bailey has an urgent question later today following on from the diligent reporting by journalist Chris Musson on tracing, tracing times. And we are very interested to hear more from the, the Cabinet Secretary today on the measures that, that would support not just the motion, but the approach set out in, in her amendment. I want to highlight a few things that stakeholders have highlighted to us before the debate. The Royal College of Nursing in Scotland say, as a minimum, testing should be universally available to all staff, irrespective of whether they have symptoms or have been caring for patients with COVID-19. And we agree with the RCN that tests need to be both available and accessible to staff where and when they need it. Scottish Care say the testing of social care staff remains absolutely critical, most importantly as a mechanism for identifying and minimising COVID-19 outbreaks. And they also highlight the importance of testing availability and, crucially, turnaround times. Scottish Care further recognise that testing can support loved ones to safely visit their family, keep staff safe and enable people to get the care that they deserve. And again, I would you know, plead to the, the Cabinet Secretary, we have to, to hurry up and, and connect uh, family caregivers with their loved ones because people fear they're running out of, of time. Like Scottish Care, we did um, welcome the commitments in the adult social care winter preparedness plan 
and we need to see progress being made. The Coalition of Care and Support Providers in Scotland highlight that wellbeing is one of the health and social care standards that care providers are required to meet. A key element is those who are being supported feel safe and protected from avoidable harm. Routine testing would help support this for both supported people and staff. And this was echoed in a recent Care Inspectorate report. I recall one of my constituents in North Lanarkshire who was receiving care at home um, before COVID and, and in the early part of the pandemic, she was seeing different carers coming into her home and she felt like it was a game of, of Russian roulette. So people do feel frightened, Cabinet Secretary. CCSP also note that testing of those being discharged from hospital into care settings other than care homes is not standard. For example, sheltered housing. Our motion would address that. Cancer Research UK again stressed the importance to have COVID protect the safe spaces in our hospitals. And I think we all agree that this is a really important issue because cancer is the leading cause of death in Scotland. So routine, frequent and rapid testing for all NHS staff in primary and secondary care. I'm out of time, presiding officer, but in conclusion, I want to say that I hope today's, today's debate is an opportunity to unite the Chamber, not just on the vital principle of expanding routine testing for all health and social care staff, but on the need for urgent action, it's not enough just to praise our frontline healthcare staff. We need to protect them and protect the people they care for. Let's work together to make progress. And I move the motion in my name. Thank you very much. I now call on Jean Freeman to speak to and move Amendment 23296.3. Presiding officer, let me start by being clear that I agree with the motion, motion from Ms Lennon uh, and that from Mr. the amendment from Mr Cameron. And that all my amendment seeks to do is clarify that the way we will deliver the rollout of regular asymptomatic testing to NHS frontline staff and social care workers will be on the basis of clinical advice. As members know, since the 25th of May, we've been undertaking weekly testing of care home staff and the most recent figures published today show that a total of 41,569 staff were tested in the period between the 2nd and 8th of November. Broadly speaking, the weekly figures are running somewhere between 39 and 41,000 per week. Since the 8th of July, we've been, we have been routinely testing frontline NHS staff in oncology and hemato-oncology hemato wards and day patient areas, including radiotherapy, in wards caring for people over 65 years of age where the length of stay is over three months, and in long-stay learning disability and mental health care. Members also know that both that we are actively scaling up our testing capacity to reach 65,000 tests per day through a combination of NHS Scotland regional hubs and increased Glasgow Lighthouse capacity. I expect that capacity, give me a second, I expect that capacity to increase still further as two additional measures come in stream. Yeah. Annika Lynn. Thank you. Grateful to the Cabinet Secretary and I welcome what she said so far. Just so we can get a, a sense of the scale of the challenge ahead of us, can the Cabinet Secretary say what proportion of NHS staff at the moment are being tested weekly so we've got an idea of how far we still have to go? Cabinet Secretary. So uh, I can't quite do the maths, it's not a huge proportion, but I can tell you that the estimate we have of NHS staff in emergency departments, surgical, medical, and including uh, frontline paramedics is 132,500. And the estimate we have of care at home staff, including housing support, residential settings for learning disability and personal assistance is 82,000. And that of course is in addition to uh, some of the other uh, groups that we'll talk about. Um, the two areas that I was uh, mentioning was, first of all, the use of new technology, such as robotics in the processing of tests, which increases the number, I'm sorry, I need to make progress, increase the number of samples that can be processed. And secondly, the increased use of new test types, which do not require lab processes, but give on-the-spot results. And indeed, my colleague, Mr. Lockhead, earlier today spoke about some of those that we will use uh, with students before they return home at Christmas. These new test types have lower levels of sensitivity and specificity than the PCR test. 
That does not mean they have no value or use, but it does mean that they're not appropriate in certain circumstances or for certain uses, such as clinical diagnosis, where the PCR test is the right one to use. In October, we published the clinical and scientific review of our testing strategy, which set out clear clinical advice on the priorities to be followed, the most important being clinical care of patients and responding to symptomatic demand. But that review also set out how we should prioritise routine testing to mitigate the risk of asymptomatic transmission with the aim of protecting those most vulnerable to the harshest impact of COVID-19. So there are a number of groups to be included as a result and NHS and social care frontline staff are rightly there alongside care home visitors, emergency admissions and visiting professionals to care homes. As I said in the chamber, I think last week, I will come back before the end of this month to set out our clear plan with timescales, test type and test routes for the rollout of asymptomatic testing to these groups. I'm acutely conscious of the importance not only of delivering on this clear commitment, but also of doing that in a way that is both timely and sustainable. It is a significant logistical and planning exercise that needs to make sure not only that we can test people, but that our turnaround times in the lab processing channels we use are as good as we need them to be. Uh, Presiding officer, in conclusion, I'm aware of my time. I don't think we will find much disagreement between us this afternoon. I am as impatient as everyone else to get asymptomatic testing rolled out, but I am as determined as I am impatient that we will do it properly and sustainably. I move the amendment in my name and I look forward to returning to the chamber with the plan. Thank you. I now call on Donald Cameron to speak to and move amendment 23296.1. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I begin by moving that amendment in my name? During this pandemic, we've seen a heroic effort from all of our NHS and social care staff to cope with the demands and pressures that have come to the fore as a result of this unpredictable virus. But as we enter the winter months, those pressures on our NHS and social care sector will undoubtedly intensify. We must ensure that our health care services are fully equipped and best placed to deal with what comes along. And as Monica Lennon has rightly identified, we must ensure we are making full use of our testing capacity, and in particular that those who are working on the front line of our NHS and social care sectors are all tested weekly. Because we know that by doing that, we will protect workers, patients and residents in care homes. And I should mention at this juncture the issue of testing family caregivers, given the crucial importance of enabling safe visiting of our loved ones in care homes, and I hope the Scottish Government are actively considering this. Indeed, it is right that steps are being taken to increase testing capacity from the existing capacity of around 30,000 tests a day, according to the Scottish Government's strategy review on testing. But we know that while that capacity exists, it hasn't always been fully utilised. Between the 26th of May and the 17th of August, the daily average number of tests carried out was only 7,500 or so tests, falling well short of the amount of existing capacity at any given time. And the Cabinet Secretary mentioned the most recent, testing, re recent figures. In the week uh, that's just passed, only 41,569 care home staff were tested out of approximately 53,000 staff. That's over 11,400 staff who remain untested, which we think is unacceptable. Will the member take an intervention? I will. Jean will the member accept that uh, in any given week, you will not have all 53,000 odd care home staff in a care home to be tested because some will be uh, off because they are unwell. Some may be off because they are isolating, having been tested uh, prior to that week. Some may be on holiday. So it's not possible to judge the success of care home worker testing by looking to see 100% of staff tested every single week. That's simply not reasonable. Donald well, if it's not reasonable, why did the Cabinet Secretary give assurances that all care home staff would be tested every week when we know that simply isn't happening? In fact, the SNP government have never met its target of testing all care home staff every week. And according to the Coalition of Care and Support Providers in Scotland, None of the estimated 71,000 people who work in care at home are able to access routine testing. Now, that simply isn't good enough when we're talking about supporting our frontline workers and some of the most vulnerable people in our society. And it's a clear reminder of the risks that those on the front line face every day, 
while dealing with this virus. And in addition to increasing capacity and increasing the number of tests carried out, we also need to be able to give people their results as quickly as possible. While regular and faster testing of staff is important, we must also ensure that our contract, contact tracing capacity is able to cope with increasing demand during the winter months. That underpins our amendment today. And it is notable that today in the Scottish Sun newspaper, we learn that Test and Protect is failing to meet current expectations, performing up to five times worse than previously claimed, with data showing that in the majority of weeks in September and October, Test and Protect staff fail to contact around about half of positive cases within 24 hours of being notified. We still don't know if we have enough contact tracers in place to meet growing demands. We need to get an urgent assurance from this government that it, this system will be able to meet winter demand and also be able to quickly trace people so we can reduce the spread of the virus. This is a system that is meant to keep us safe. That is uh, why we amend today in terms of the contact tracing system. Deputy Presiding Officer, can I conclude by stating that we will be supporting Scottish Labour's motion today and the Scottish Government amendment. We hope others will support our amendment too. If we are able to control the spread of the virus, we must ensure that those who are most at risk, namely our health and social care staff, are protected and that our contact tracing capabilities are able to cope. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I now call on Alison Johnson to be followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. On the 24th of April, I wrote to the Cabinet Secretary for Health and said that I considered routine testing for hospital and care workers who are on the front line of the COVID-19 pandemic an urgent imperative, and I still do. At that time, I pointed to a paper published in The Lancet which set out the case for health and care workers screening to prevent transmission and confirmed that University College London Hospital was piloting such testing to, and I quote, further limit no nosocomial transmission and to alleviate a critical source of anxiety for health and care workers. It said, a healthy COVID-19 free workforce that is not burned out will be an asset to the prolonged response to the COVID-19 crisis. And what an asset our health and care workforce are, presiding officer. Now we've rightly applauded, loudly applauded their efforts from our own doorsteps, but we must do much more. Of course, we should pay these hardworking people more. And as I said last week in this chamber, we owe them the protection that testing provides. This week, NHS England has made testing available to all patient facing staff. Staff will receive home kits to test themselves twice a week. And while these lateral flow tests have a lower specificity, all positive results will be tested with a PCR test, as we've just heard the, the Minister for Higher Education announce, uh, re students. I wrote to the First Minister too on the 14th of May, um, pointing to Imperial College London research advising that regular screening of health and care workers, irrespective of symptoms, could prevent up to a third of transmission. Reducing transmission by a third is huge. It's no surprise that our proposal to test health and care staff enjoys widespread support, including that of the Royal College of Nursing, Scottish Care and the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. Yet only last week, the First Minister said, that the top priority for our testing capacity right now is people with symptoms, because that's how we break chains of transmission. But that chain may have started with an asymptomatic carrier of COVID. We have known for months the dangers of asymptomatic transmission, but we're still waiting for the virus to come to us. Mark Woolhouse, the Professor of Infectious Disease Epidemiology at the University of Edinburgh said in the press this week, Though we're still not finding out about half of the COVID cases in Scotland or the UK more generally, and that this is like trying to control the epidemic with one hand tied behind our back. He welcomed a testing pilot in Liverpool, which seeks to solve this problem. Slovakia tested two thirds of its population in two days. I raised this last week and the, the First Minister said that this was antibody testing. It's not the case, it's antigen testing. And yes, we should question the specificity and sensitivity of tests, but we also have to question why Scotland seems so very unambitious when it comes to testing. I have asked many times for increased testing for those on the front line and more broadly. I wrote to the First Minister in September on the issue of mass testing, citing the availability of quick turnaround, low cost tests. The technology is improving. Our testing numbers are not. In fact, the total number of daily tests carried out in Scotland has barely changed since the end of August. A frequent response is that the government is prioritising its testing capacity 
So let's look at that. The Scottish Government aims to expand its overall testing capacity to 65,000 tests per day by winter, but in the last week, Scotland processed an average of only 18,700 tests per day. Yesterday, 10,499 tests were processed. Scotland has been too slow to implement the, the level of testing needed. While routine testing for care home staff was introduced on the 25th of May, routine testing is still not available for staff in far too many settings, including, as our briefings for today from CCPS, Cancer Research UK, and Scottish Care Confirm, in home care for those supporting people with no homes or dealing with addiction in issues for all staff involved in the diagnosis and treatment of cancer. I said it last week and I'll say it again, here we are in November, someone could still be working in a Scottish hospital with COVID-19 and not even know it. It's unacceptable for the staff and the families they return home to, for the patients they look after. And I hope that this issue has progressed at a pace that has been sorely lacking from this point. Thank you, presiding officer. Alex Cole Hamilton to be followed by Anna Sarwar. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. It's a great privilege to follow such an excellent speech from Alison Johnson there. I absolutely associate myself with her remarks. We, the Liberal Democrats, will absolutely support um, all amendments uh, to the motion and the motion itself. Uh, there's a guarded acceptance of the government ones because I'm anxious that the terminology used in this could belie uh, a sort of business as usual approach that of course why wouldn't we support the prioritization of testing within our hospitals and in our care sectors but that has been their default position since the start of this pandemic and i, I don't believe we can just continue as we have been uh, we are deep into this pandemic i i don't have very much time but i will okay for the cabinet so, so if we don't use clinical prioritization as the way to rule this out what would the member suggest we do use Alex well i i refer the cabinet secretary to my remarks just a moment ago saying we are accepting the scottish government's uh, amendment on that basis we absolutely agree that if you're rolling something out you have to do it on a prioritized basis but this government has been prioritizing things for months and we still aren't testing everybody who needs to be tested so while Whilst there was a period of uncertainty at the start of this pandemic, in the foothills of this emergency, we now know that there are many who contract the virus but display no symptoms, may never even know they had it. That's why the best way to prevent a spike in infection in our hospitals, in our care homes, and crucially, as we've heard many times this afternoon, in care at home, is to routinely, routinely test all staff and with regularity. Currently, a, a considerable number of health and social care workers are being tested, but there cannot be full confidence in the testing system until we know this is happening with universality. We ask a lot of these workers. This emergency has tested them like nothing before, and they don't need the anxiety that they may have. They be an, an asymptomatic carrier of the disease and by extension, a, a danger to their patients or the people they care for. People who work in social care who cannot currently access routine testing include staff providing care at home, as we've heard, those in palliative care, where you would imagine this was absolutely critical, respite care and day care services, staff supporting children and young people, or people without a home, and those uh, in residential rehabilitation for drug addiction. The coalition of care and support workers uh, providers in Scotland have been pressing for an expansion of routine testing for a long time, in particular for care at home, and I'll come on to this now. The care inspectorate, as we've heard, estimates 53,000 staff working care homes for adults compared to 71,000 working in care at home. That's a huge group of people who are coming into contact with our most vulnerable citizens, many of whom were asked by this government to shield for much of lockdown on a daily basis. The pausing cancer screening programmes during the first wave as well meant that over 100,000 people when every month, uh, every month were no longer being screened for bowel, breast or cervical cancer in Scotland. Whilst these services have restarted, it will be some time before the backlog has cleared. And Cancer Research UK have called for routine, frequent and rapid COVID testing of all NHS staff in primary and secondary care to ensure that the restart of these vital programmes happen and we get the care needed to the 
these people who have been have fallen behind in the prognosis of their condition. Presiding officer, these benches and members across the chamber have been calling for a wider rollout of testing for some time. We're now into winter. Time is running out to upscale this before the busy winter period and the drain on resources hits with full effect. Alison Johnson is absolutely right to say that in Slovakia they did test millions of their population on a single day and it was antigen testing, not antibody testing, which is about fast track testing. We certainly need to be more ambitious for Scotland. We're now seeing a pilot of mass testing in Liverpool and we know that testing is one of the strongest defences we have at preventing the spread of this virus. But that has to start with a concrete testing officer, uh, for those who do, um, we depend on in health and social care. Scottish Government expects to be able to uh, process 65,000 PCR tests a day from December. That, that's welcome. But I don't think that rate of expansion is particularly fast. I can see I'm running out of time. All I will say is this, that we know that the NHS is always under a lot of pressure at winter. and We must do all we can to mitigate that this year more than ever. And testing all of our health and all of our social care staff is a good place to start. Thank you. Thank you. We now move to the open debate. We are tight for time, so four minute speeches, please. Uh, Anna Sauer to be followed by George Ann. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I start by putting on record my thanks to all our NHS and care staff who continue to fight against this virus on the front line and send my condolences and love to all those that have lost uh, a loved one. Uh, we have had some good news this week with the uh, looking like we have the prospect of a vaccine coming very soon. But let's be honest. Eight months into this pandemic, eight months, we still haven't fixed testing and we still haven't fixed test and protect. Eight months. The real race now is whether we fix a vaccine first or whether we fix testing and test and trace first. The vaccine was meant to be the end game, but in some ways the vaccine might well, might well rescue us from a failed testing and test and trace uh, programme. Because week after week, the government has been asked about testing and week after week, we've had promises and week after week, people have been let down. Footballers are getting tested every single week. Premiership footballers get a test every single week. But NHS staff don't get a test every single week. Care home staff don't get a test every single week. Care at home staff don't get a test every single week. And all of us are being sent images of NHS staff receiving bin liners as aprons that they have to wear as part of their PPE. This isn't fair and it isn't working. Now, I've been constructive both in public and in private with the Cabinet Secretary, but I think we have to call a spade a spade. Test and protect and testing is not working and is simply not good enough and the government has to get a grip. We've heard the tragic stories that have happened in our cancer services. We wouldn't have those tragic stories in our cancer services if we had testing sorted. We've had tragic stories about what's happening in our care homes, about not being able to visit people in care homes. We wouldn't have those tragic stories if we had, test, if we had sorted testing. Only now we move forward in terms of restarting dental services. We wouldn't have those problems if we had sorted testing. We wouldn't have the problems that we've seen in many of our university campuses if we had testing sorted. We have to get testing sorted. ASAP, mass testing and rapid testing. If it's good enough for Liverpool, it's good enough for Glasgow and it's good enough for the rest of Scotland. But also in test and protect, the government kept saying, and the First Minister in response to me when I spoke in this chamber just a couple of weeks ago, said that test and protect is working. I'm sorry, there's a big difference between coming to this chamber and claiming that three quarters of people are being successfully traced and tested when in fact it's less than half. That is a big, big difference. Test and protect is not working. Too many people are not getting the phone call. Too many people are not being traced. And too many people are not being given the advice they need to try and get us to beat this virus. And as Monica Lennon's already said, what's happening in our hospitals is simply unacceptable. I received an email this week from a distraught son who said for seven months his father is shielded. Seven months his family has stayed away from him. He couldn't see his grandchildren. He couldn't see his children. Seven months he is shielded. And he went into hospital to get a heart scan and caught COVID from the hospital and died. How is that acceptable? It is simply unacceptable. And getting a test and trace program and testing right can help us fix these problems. I accept and I thank the government 
for the communications exercise. We expect you to be brilliant at communications. Thank you for that. But we need you to be good at beating the virus too. So please fix the testing system, fix Test and Protect, so we can save lives in Scotland. Thank you, George Adam, to be followed by Annie Wells. Thank you, President Officer. President Officer, I welcome this debate today and I welcome what the, the Cabinet Secretary has already said about how she wants to work with others to ensure that we can uh, solve this issue. But I think we can all agree that the continued health and safety of all of our frontline health and social key, uh, key, uh, key workers are a key priority right now. Since the beginning of this pandemic, I have expressed my ongoing gratitude to all those working in this sector. And I would like to take a moment at the very beginning of my speech to once again thank our brave committee doctors, nurses, carers, porters and everyone else working within health and social care. My heart also goes out to those that have lost a loved one during these difficult times. But as this pandemic continues and we try to limit the spread of COVID-19 throughout our communities, the Scottish Government has made testing a priority for key workers and the public. They are continuing to prioritise expansion of NHS testing capacity every day. I think it's important to note that here that Scotland now has a maximum week weekday lab capacity of over 10,000 tests. Yet at the beginning of this crisis, at the very beginning, we had a capacity of for only 350. These 350 tests per day were split at that time between Edinburgh and Glasgow, yet now there has been an increase to 10,000 with labs in all 14 health boards, alongside key partner nodes from academia and those in the private sector, all operational and testing every single day. While 350 to 10,000 is an exceptional increase, the Scottish Government is committed to building the lab processing capacity of, uh, to at least 65,000 tests per day come winter. And I know in all our new regional hubs, which go live between this month and next, will help us to move closer to that target and allow us to be less reliant on the UK Lighthouse Lab Network. Along I have not got much time, sorry. Alongside massively increasingly our national testing capacity as to cope with the demand, weekly testing is already offered to all care home staff, regardless of whether they have symptoms or if there is an outgoing break in their home. When cases are detected, uh, enhanced outbreak investigations are mandatory by offering a test to all care home staff regardless. And it's important that the Scottish Government continues to protect society's most vulnerable by focusing on those most likely to bring the virus into the home in the first place. And the data would suggest that the uptake of testing is already quite good. Statistics published on the 4th of November show 41,767 care home staff were tested in this latest reporting period, which is an increase of 2,000 staff in the previous week. The percentage of available staff tested was at least 72 per cent. And while I know many of you across the chamber were asking why the remaining 28 per cent were not tested, it's important to remember that testing can only take place with the explicit consent of the staff and when all the staff are actually present for testing in the first place, as opposed to being on annual leave, absent or otherwise. I am not one for filling a speech full of statistics like this, but when we are dealing with an issue as serious as this one, it's important to remember these key points. I know uh, many people and some, and some are sometimes reluctant to be tested for fear of testing positive and then having to isolate and miss work. And so, in the light of this, the Scottish Government have advocated for a supportive approach when staff decline and, uh, and encourage employers to instead get to the root of the issue of the reason of refusal. Presiding officer, I would like to think, and it's, it's crucial to highlight, that the Scottish Government has implemented routine testing for healthcare workers when the evidence suggests it is appropriate to do so. Current policy is that all asymptomatic healthcare staff are tested for COVID-19 where there is an outbreak in previously COVID-free ward. And since the 8th of July, this has been extended to include staff working in the highest risk areas of spe specialist wards, long-term care of the elderly wards and long-term psychiatric wards. In order, presiding officer, to combat this pandemic as safely and as efficiently as possible, the Scottish Government have from the beginning followed the advice of clinicians, scientists and professionals. And for me, as we continue to go down this and we're agreeing with each other today, we need to remember these specialists when we're dealing with this issue. Thank you. Annie Wells to be followed by Pauline McNeill. Thank you, presiding officer. 
I welcome the opportunity to speak in this important debate today. As many have noted in recent weeks and months, the pressure on the NHS this winter is going to be unprecedented. On top of the regular challenges faced over winter, Scotland is also continuing its battle against COVID-19. The virus has already put immense strain on the NHS over the summer and autumn. The truth is that this pressure is only going to intensify as we enter the winter months. In Glasgow and the surrounding area, we have already seen how the impact of COVID-19 is putting pressure on the Greater Glasgow and Clyde's flu vaccination programme, with many vulnerable people having to wait for their flu jabs much longer than anticipated. That's why, to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 and to ease pressure on the NHS during the next crucial few months, we on these benches believe more testing and faster contact tracing is essential as we look to slow down transmission of the virus in our health and social care system. As such, Presiding Officer, in the spirit of the Scottish Labour Party's motion, we are urging the SNP Government to introduce routine weekly COVID-19 testing for NHS staff and social care workers who have been on the front line protecting the nation during this awful pandemic. However, based on their record so far, I am seriously concerned the SNP Government has a long way to go before it realises this pledge. Since this crisis began in March, they have continuously failed to ramp up Scotland's testing capacity. Only last month did the SNP Government's review of their own testing strategy note that further work was required to speed up the pace of turnaround times for the tests, which could allow for quicker contact tracing and subsequent isolation of those considered close contacts. If this was achieved, it would have undoubtedly reduced transmission. This important point lies at the heart of the Scottish Conservatives' amendment put forward for today's debate. Furthermore, from the beginning of the pandemic, we have repeatedly called on the SNP to address shortcomings in Scotland's testing capacity, offering constructive suggestions on how to do so. For example, we have called on the government to increase the number of mobile testing units across the country, which would significantly bolster Scotland's testing capacity. Take-up of these testing sites has been low, largely because of the distance key workers must travel to get to them. More are therefore required to support those in rural areas and their care homes. Moving on to care homes specifically, presiding officer, this is the area where I have real serious concerns regarding the regular testing of staff. In July this year, the Health Secretary pledged that all care home staff would be tested on a weekly basis, and yet data shows that between the 26th of October and the 1st of November, approximately only 79% of Scotland's care home staff were tested for COVID-19. Warm words are all well and good, presiding officer, but action matters more. How are the Scottish people supposed to have faith in the SNP government's ability to ramp up testing this winter for care home staff when they continually, continually fail to meet their own pledges? The SNP must finally get serious and focus all their efforts on ensuring weekly routine testing for all care home staff. They owe it to Scotland's elderly and vulnerable population. And let me take this opportunity to remind the SNP to abide by the vote in Parliament last week, which called for immediate establishment of a public inquiry to find out what has gone wrong in your care homes during this pandemic. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you very much. A strict four minutes to speakers now. Please, Polly McNeill, followed by Sandra White. I don't think your mic is your microphone on, or it is now. Thank Just you. starting. I firstly want to pay tribute to the scientists across the world who have been working night and day to find a vaccine. But we know there's still a long way to go. But we can never repay the incredible efforts of our NHS staff and care workers who have begun, gone beyond the call of duty in looking after patients and saving lives and putting their own safety at risk, working in settings which have the sickest and most vulnerable parent, uh, patients where the prevalence of the virus can be high. Wearing the hard-fought PPE equipment alone must be very tiring for many NHS workers. And yet we are still calling for the adequate and regular testing for NHS and care workers. 
As the Royal College of Nursing says, the testing must be accessible to the workforce and not be asked to take a test on their annual leave is disrespectful, I think, to the, the nature of the workforce. But there does need to be more recognition of the asymptomatic aspect of COVID-19, which has enabled it to spread so quickly. And if this is not recognised in a system, then we are in a losing battle without it. Routine testing is a recognition that asymptomatic nature of COVID-19 is why we might be struggling to get it under control. And as we head into winter, there is now a serious worry that our nurses and doctors are already at breaking point. Unison reported that during the first wave of the virus, highlighted that 80% of NHS staff were already tired and 30% said they were very tired and they were getting inadequate breaks. I mean, this is absolutely unacceptable. So we must improve the conditions for our workforce and tackling I mean, the second wave and we must keep them safe. But what is particularly worrying is the suggestion that the transmission of COVID-19 is not yet under fully control within our hospitals. It is a failure of testing policy. Every other country in the world that has been successful seems to have signed up to the idea of mass testing. It was also Professor Taylor who suggested that testing patients irrespective of age at the front door if they don't have the typical symptoms, um, is an absolute must. And this is the kind of ambition that we need to have here. If we don't have this, it will further impact on the delivery of non-COVID cares. Alison Johnson says there are other small countries like Slovakia who have tested the entire population and two thirds of it in two days. Liverpool is doing mass testing. They are using the Laffer flow system. They're using lamp testing. We seem to be behind the situation here in Scotland. I'd like to know why. NHS 24 is also under pressure as we hear reports that staff have been absent due to reasons related to COVID and noting that absences were critically impacting on the service deliveries. We now rely on NHS 24 more than ever and the Royal College of Physicians of Glasgow and Edinburgh have jointly called for a national strategy to safely manage the competing pressures of treating patients with COVID-19 and those without COVID-19 who need urgent care and elective work. But I believe this is where we are now. As we speak, patients have had their consultations cancelled, many with no replacement dates and others with dates well into the future. Patients who have managed their conditions through lockdown in anticipation of an operation are now extremely, extremely worried that their care has been put off indefinitely. So it is only with a COVID-free workforce that is well looked after that will give us any chance of our getting our NHS back uh, under uh, back into looking at critical care. In conclusion, presiding officer, we need to go back to a system where patients feel they can challenge the fact that they've not had an appointment or that their critical care has not been dealt with. The government must give a positive and clear message to, to patients that the NHS still serves them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I call Sandra White to follow by Edward Mountain. Ms White, please. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. I, I am pleased to speak in this debate. I was going to put forward some statistics, but I see that George Adams and, and others have as well in regards to the Scottish Government, the uh, 10,000 tests, which is routine testing and with health workers, etc., which are very, very important. But the debate is obviously about testing. And I'm going to talk from a personal experience, and I want to thank all of the the workers in the hospitals, from the cleaners and porters right way up to specialist nurses, etc., and the care workers as well. It's a very, very difficult situation that everyone finds themselves in. Uh, personally, one person um, did not uh, test positive but tested negative. Now, were they asymptomatic? I don't know. But unfortunately, that person did get COVID. Now, at that time, they, they tested negative. So whilst testing, and this is what the debate is about, I think we've got to look at the other issues as well as testing. And I am quite anxious that if we say everyone has to be tested every week, or, or it could be even every couple of days, then the other issues to do with 
keeping this virus under control will be forgotten. And I hope that I, I'm not meaning to uh, say anything against testing, but I just think we need to look at that also. Now, care homes have been mentioned uh, on a number of occasions, and Annie Wells mentioned care homes there as well. Care homes, are, are the huge care homes, I've already seen the difficulties in them. The private care homes, we've already seen the difficulties in them as well. So I think we need to take that part of these care homes out of it. Lack of hygiene, we know all the situations which has been raised in the press coverage on a certain care home, which has been privately owned, one of the biggest private um, owned care homes in, in Scotland and the UK as well. So I think we take that part out of it. Another area, I don't know if anyone in, in the chamber or anyone else knows anyone who's went through and had a test. If you've got someone who is elderly, uh, someone who has dementia, they, it's very, very difficult uh, to ask them. You can't force them. You ask any care home uh, provider or any care assistant and anyone in the hospital even. It's very, very difficult to ask these people to take this test. It's not just a small swab in your mouth and up, up your nose. It's right down the back of your throat. It's right down the back of your, your nose, right near enough into your throat. And we've got to remember these things too. I'm not saying that we don't test. Yes, this, this is an emotion and I'm supportive of it and uh, the amendments as well. But I think we've got to look at the realities of this. The only thing that will stop COVID is listening to the experts, guidance, yes, testing. But for me, I, and not just me, but other, other experts, I'm not an expert, but other people out there as well, it is not the panacea. The vaccine's the panacea. And we've got to get through this situation until we get a vaccine. And we've got to look at the guidance. We've got to yes, test. We've got to follow it through. But we must be vigilant as well in regards to hygiene, shielding, looking after our older people, not moving people about in care homes from one care home to another. The testing won't stop that if the people who provide that care don't look after their workers and the people who are living in these care homes. I just wanted to get that point across, uh, uh, presiding officer. I think it's an important point, but it's not a panacea uh, testing. It is along with other things as well. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Officer. I call Edward Mountain to be followed by Ruth Mr Mountain. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And with the excellent speeches that have gone before, I propose to keep my talk, uh, speech relatively short. Now, I always judge leaders on whether they would undertake the same risks that they ask people to do on their behalf. That is the judge, in my mind, of a good leader and a bad leader. And the reality, therefore, is that patient-facing health workers were three times more likely to be admitted to hospital with COVID-19 during the first wave of the pandemic compared to any other working uh, age adult in Scotland. Now, given that we know the risks of transmission is greater for health workers, surely we must do everything that we can to reduce that risk. Routine and reliable testing is a vital layer of protection and promises not only to limit the spread of the virus, but to protect those people who are protecting us. We simply cannot afford to have COVID outbreaks within our NHS, as it means that scheduled elective surgeries and other treatments have to be suspended. For example, we can't afford to have an increase on the 4,355 operations that have been cancelled in NHS Highland in the last six months alone. So this SNP government must ensure that all frontline health staff are given the urgent support, like routine testing, to ensure that operations continue. And this routine testing must also be ro rolled out to care home workers, as it is, and to care at home workers that we've heard about too. It's not just PPE that they need to protect themselves and the people they care for from the pandemic. It is also the testing. Now, I want to give you an example that was given to me by a care worker at home. Imagine for a moment what it would be like to be a care worker looking after an elderly lady who suffers from dementia and requires help going to the toilet, but rails against the care workers who are there trying to help her as they get her undressed. 
she doesn't understand why they are doing that. In this moment of drama in the morning and in the evening, the care worker's PPE is accidentally ripped off and there could be transmission of the virus either to the lady who the care worker is looking after or to the care worker herself. And one of those people may well die as a result of it. Now, the care worker won't know for sure until the weekly test is completed. That's if it happens at all. Let's not forget that this FSMP government has never met their pledge on testing. Our care workers should not be put in this position. And this government must ensure that routine testing is made available to all care workers, whether run uh, uh, care at home workers, either run by the NHS or run privately. It's not fair to ask private companies and employee, home com uh, employee companies to pay for testing over and above the routine testing that they're given. Now, presiding officer, we are in the second wave of this pandemic. This Scottish Government, I believe, has a huge duty to protect all our healthcare professionals and care workers and care at home workers from the pandemic. They can carry out that duty. They, sorry, they cannot carry out that duty if there is no rollout of routine testing. And my simple message to them is stop the warm words and the good PR and get on with doing what we know is right to be done. Thank you, Mr. Mountain. I call Ruth McGuire. Ms. McGuire is the last speaker in the open debate. Presiding officer, I want, I want to begin by acknowledging the incredible efforts of our NHS and care staff who continue to be on the front line, caring for patients with COVID-19 and working to prevent further spread in hospitals and care homes. Like others in the chamber, this debate is not an abstract one for me. I have family and friends doing these crucial jobs, and I'm hugely grateful to them for all they do under really difficult circumstances. Currently, estimates from the Care Inspectorate are that over 53,000 staff work in care homes for adults compared to over 71,000 71, staff working in care at home. As we've heard, weekly testing is offered to all care home staff regardless of whether they have symptoms or if there's an ongoing outbreak in their care home. The Scottish Government has implemented routine testing for healthcare workers where the evidence says it is appropriate to do so. But there are social care staff who currently cannot access routine testing. They include staff providing care at home, supporting living and housing support service, staff providing palliative care, staff providing support and care for children and young people, staff supporting people with no homes or dealing with addiction issues, and staff providing respite services and day services, although obviously not all these services are on at the moment. The safety of these workers, as well as of those who are in their care, must be paramount. It is important to acknowledge, as the briefing from CCPS does, that third sector providers have kept infection rates to a minimum from March through to the end of August without routine testing, through careful risk assessment and use of infection prevention control. Routine testing is important, but it is important to say it's only part of the picture. I do understand and I support the calls for it. It intuitively feels like the right thing to do, but it absolutely must be led by evidence. It's really important to remember that testing provides a single point in time assessment of whether someone has the virus. It does not mean they won't go on to develop the virus. Briefly, yeah. Alison Johnson. The Scottish Government's own testing strategy and nosocomial review group have recognised the importance of routine testing for healthcare workers. So I don't see why there's still this question about prioritisation of certain staff groups over others. Is it not long past time that we just immediately got on with this, introduced it as a matter of urgency? Ruth McGuire. I think Alison Johnston's consistently made um, these points in her speech and in chamber before, and she's, she's done it again. Um, I think it's also really important to note that some staff who are eligible for a test are also declining to take up the test and they can't be forced to take a test. Presiding officer, in the short time that I have, I'd also want to talk briefly about the barrier that losing income can place on people and affect how they choose to act if indeed it is a choice for low paid workers. Um, I welcome that the Scottish Government has established a social care staff support fund to ensure that care workers who test positive for COVID-19 will receive sick pay above the current statutory level of 95.85 a week, which should help in some way to ease the financial burden having to isolate places on them. 
It's absolutely crucial that employers also act responsibly and fulfil their duties with regards to health and safety of their staff and that workers are actively encouraged to follow guidance and not pressured into coming into work. I have had cases where this has not happened right away and I would urge workers to know their rights and speak up where they feel things are not right and reiterate that employers must fulfil their duties and not put staff in harm's way. Presiding officer, I support evidence-led routine testing for all our health and social care staff. Thank you very much. Closing speeches. Uh, Colin Bragg Whittle close to the Conservatives. Four minutes, Mr Whittle. Yeah, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I would start by reminding the Chamber that I have a daughter who is in the front line with the Scottish uh, NHS. And can I thank the Labour Party for using some of their debating time to bring this de important debate to the Chamber as I rise to close on behalf of the Scottish Conservatives. I think, as you would imagine, Deputy Presiding Officer, there is much agreement across the Chamber as to the incredible debt of gratitude we owe our NHS our health and social care workers for their dedication and compassion, highlighted specifically during this pandemic. But I think we need to remember uh, that's how they behave throughout their whole careers. And the Chamber is also in agreement that routine weekly COVID-19 testing for all health and social care workers would be a good thing. Not only would it protect frontline staff, but also the patients that they look after. Monica Lennon started her speech by reminding the Chamber that the threat from COVID remains life-threatening. And I'm sure we all send our condolences out to all those who have lost loved ones to this virus. But of course, it's not just about testing capacity. It's the Scottish Government's ability to deploy and utilise that capacity. Are there enough qualified personnel on the ground? It's also about the ability to turn those tests around and deliver the results timiously. As has been pointed out in this debate, I think capacity has been ramped up too slowly and capacity is going unused. I think we all know there are far too many messages from our constituents telling us that testing from our frontline health and social care workers is sporadic. The truth of the matter is the Scottish Government were unprepared despite all the warning signs from across the globe as the virus made its way towards us. We are all too aware of the PPE shortages and the scramble to find ways to fill that gap. And Donald Cameron's amendment uh, highlights that contract tracing is a key weapon in tackling COVID-19 that ability to isolate those who may have been in contact with the virus and break that infection cycle. And also he alluded to the fact that the data from the government is not necessarily consistent and accurate all the time. And I think if the public are to have confidence in the programme, this will have to change. We were all aware that the likelihood of a second wave uh, 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 was, was available, was going to happen. And, but yet after eight months, we still haven't quite got the testing regime right. I would have hoped by now and expected that the Scottish Government's response would be a bit more uh, sophisticated and comprehensive than it actually is. In fact, by now, we should have been making the case for testing all of our teaching staff, our other emergency services, or what about our military personnel abroad, especially those who will be coming home for Christmas. And we could throw in students there as well who are struggling just now uh, trying, to, trying to get home for Christmas or the family, uh, uh, family caregivers visiting our nursing homes. The reality is there has been a lack of forward planning. I think the Scottish Government are still too reactive rather than proactive in tackling the virus. It may be an unpredictable virus, but it's entirely predictable that we would need testing capacity and the ability to deploy that testing capacity. The Cabinet Secretary alluded to there that there's, there's two, that we'll require 200,000 tests per week in the health service before we get to the groups I just mentioned there uh, that are considered. Anna Samwar did make the point that the vaccine could actually, uh, could actually be here before the issues with testing and test and protect are resolved. So yes, Deputy Presiding Officer, not only should the Scottish Government introduce routine weekly COVID-19 testing for other health and social care workers, it should have been done long before now. The problem is, Deputy Presiding Officer, I am not sure even after all that we've learned about this virus in the last eight months, that the Scottish Government could do this, even if they wanted to. Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you very much, Mr Witt. I call Jean Freeman to close with the Scottish Government. Four minutes, please, Ms Freeman. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And just to respond to Mr Whittle, not only can we do it, but we will do it. Before I start and say anything else, I should uh, also express my thanks to all our health and social care staff and our emergency workers and our particular con my condolences to those health and social care staff who have lost their lives to the virus. I did uh, in my opening remarks, uh, presiding officer, say that I didn't expect much 
disagreement uh, in the debate this afternoon. I think that has proven to be the case. But we have tripped over some inaccuracies and, I think, unreasonable assertions, which I assume have been made to make a political point. So I want to clarify one or two of those. First, on test and protect, can I point out that the, uh, the World Health Organization's target calls for at least 80% of new cases to have their close contacts traced and in quarantine within 72 hours of case confirmation. The most recent figures published by our uh, independent statisticians to the 8th of November uh, is 95.8% of contact tracing of all positive cases completed within 72 hours. So it isn't fair to those staff in Test and Protect to assert that they are not performing well. They are performing very well, nor is it accurate to assert that we don't have enough of them. We have 2,221 fully trained contact tracers. Let me also clarify for members, I think we've done this before, the routes for testing, because those routes actually matter. It's not, it's not a point made for the sake of it, the routes matter. We have two routes for testing, either through the UK Lighthouse Lab or through the NHS Lab. The UK Lighthouse Lab are through the regional testing centres, the mobile testing units, the local walkthrough centres. Those are for symptomatic individuals. Uh, and we have a satellite route through the UK lab, which is the one we have been using for care home workers, asymptomatic. But those turnaround times for the satellite routes, although they have improved from the UK Lighthouse Lab for all other routes, for satellite and for home care, the improvement has not been enough or sustained enough. And that is why we are moving care home worker testing to our own NHS labs. The other route is NHS labs. Uh, which can cover asymptomatic uh, individuals and where the turnaround times consistently is at or under 24 hours. So rollout by clinical prioritisation means, as members have uh, indicated, in terms of uh, just two of the groups that we have touched on, uh, 82,000 or thereabouts for care at home staff, at least 132,500 for NHS staff, if we prioritise that group, uh, as I have said. But we do want to make sure that we're including our paramedic workforce in that as well, uh, along with care home relatives, visiting professionals and emergency admissions. Particularly important to ensure that an emergency admission, when it comes in to the acute setting, will follow either the green uh, non-COVID or the red COVID pathway. That in itself contributes to a reduction in nosocomial infections. So the rollout of asymptomatic testing is undoubtedly important, very important for this group as well as the others. And as I said earlier, I look forward to returning to the Chamber before the end of the month to deliver our plan to do just that. And the Government is happy to support both the motion and Mr Cameron's amendment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary. And I call on Alec Rowley to close for Labour. Five minutes, please, Mr Rowley. Yeah, thank you, President Officer. The, um, the SNP members that have spoken in the debate today have been defensive, and I don't think there is a need to be defensive, because what Monica Lennon is calling for is that all healthcare workers be tested on a routine and weekly basis. Surely that's something that we would all want to strive for. Sandra White said we've got to uh, look at the realities of this. It is not a panacea. Nobody's claiming it's a panacea, but let's, let's remember that the Royal College of Nurses in Scotland has written to every MSP in this chamber. This isn't about party politics. The Royal College of Nurses say, and I quote, routine COVID-19 testing for health and care professionals is an absolute must. Our members need this in order to do their jobs while keeping themselves and their patients safe. We have previously called for wider routine testing of all health and care workers in order to improve the identification and containment of potential COVID outbreaks. As a minimum, testing should be universally available to all staff, irrespective of whether they present with symptoms or have been caring for patients with COVID-19. Without this, 
health and care staff cannot be safe, nor can they be deployed safely or effectively. That is not about playing politics, Cabinet Secretary. That is about ensuring that health care staff who are on the front line are properly protected. And that's all we are asking for from this government. Now, I accept that these times are very difficult. And I accept the role of the Health Cabinet Secretary is, at this stage, massive. So I praise the Cabinet Secretary for the work that she has done and is doing throughout this pandemic. But I say to her, when it comes to testing, it is just simply not good enough. And it has to improve. The Health Secretary, when she was speaking, said that there are logistical and planning challenges. I have no doubt that there will be. But are we using all the resources that are available? I noticed when the Prime Minister was doing a press conference the other day, he had the head of the army that was overseeing the logistics in Liverpool that has put in place all these testing centres. Do we ideologically oppose using the military? Or are we going to do the same as what the UK government's done and start to bring in all those who can help us get the logistics right? Anas Sarwar talked about the possibility of the COVID vaccine. You know, Health Secretary, because you intervened in Fife. It was utter chaos when they were trying to organise the flu vaccine and unnecessarily worried loads and loads of pensioners because they put out a letter and then had, I think, one phone line to answer thousands upon thousands upon thousands of calls. So I agree we need to get the logistics correct, and that means we need to be willing to reach out. We need to look right across the UK and Europe. Where is their best practice that we can take and we can build on? And that's the point, I think, that Alison Johnson has repeatedly made, is that the World Health Organization and throughout Europe, we have seen that we need to test test, 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 trace and isolate. Why is it, therefore, that Scotland seems now to be behind most of Europe when it comes to testing and we're now behind England when it comes to testing? We need to ramp up our testing. That's the clear message that must come from today. And the other point that Anas Sarwar made about the vaccine and testing coming together, and I made this point yesterday when I asked the First Minister, I welcome, like everyone, the potential of a vaccine by the end of this year. But I know that there's still major, major hurdles to come before we start seeing that vaccine being rolled out. So we should not take our eye off the ball. We need to improve massively the testing that, and the capacity to test, and that's the message from today. I will stand and work alongside the Health Secretary. Her job must be one of the toughest in Scotland right now. So we will work together, but we have to get better at testing. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that concludes the debate on routine COVID-19 testing for all health and social care workers. It's now time to move on to the next item of business. And I can